I'm Eric Nason with NewShooter.com, and I'm here at IBC 2017, and I'm at the Sony booth, and I'm joined with... Klaus Pfeiffer. <laughs> Klaus, we have a very interesting camera behind us, uh, 8K broadcast camera. Talk to me a little bit about this new, this new camera. Well, it's a brand new camera that we just introduced uh, today. Um, it features uh, three sensors, 1.25 inch sensors, but three of them, a completely new designed uh, uh, image block um, that is uh, specifically designed for live broadcast and the necessities and the uh, what you need to do in live broadcast. 8K, how are you going to see this being used? I mean, that's, that's a lot of Ks. <laughs> That's a lot of case. Of course, um, there are um, uh, 8K broadcasts that will start in Japan uh, next year. So definitely this camera is aimed for that. But uh, you can use 8K also to, um, to take out, to uh, cut out the 4K images or even the HD images. That means you have um, uh, uh, the wide pixel range and then can use and move the um, uh, cut out uh, 4K images within these 8K images. That means it's not only an 8K camera, but it can also be a 4K camera or an HD camera. Now, can this be used also in the broadcast where for like for playback, right? You're shooting a live sports event. Might not be an 8K, it could be a, like a 6K or a 4K, and they can go to a cut shot that's really tight. That's it, and you can kind of zoom in. Um, you can use the, uh, the 8K and then zoom in because you have the resolution that is enabling you to zoom in where the, the action is happening. And this uh, camera features 120 frames per second, so definitely for, for live sports, it's, the, it's a great camera. We'll really know if those plays were the referee called it wrong or right. <laughs> definitely, you have to zoom in and see what he does. <laughs> now, uh, in broadcast cameras like this, we don't really want really shallow depth of field, correct? Yeah, because you have the long lenses, you have the box lenses, uh, where you have to zoom into the players on the field. And this is why um, it is ideal not to have uh, large sensors. We, we had to uh, limit the sensor size as much as possible, but obviously due to 8K, it is difficult to make it too small. Um, so um, it's, I think it's a good balance of uh, sensor size and resolution. Anything else you want to add about this new camera? Well, um, it features HDR, um, um, BT2020 color space, so ideally for HDR production with S-Log3. Um, it, uh, it features a new mount that was made specifically for that camera. And at the moment, what we see behind us is a prototype lens from NHK. But we will have um, uh, Canon and Fujinon uh, uh, showcasing their lenses on our cameras uh, within the week. Okay, excellent. Today we have the, the Venice camera here. Is this the first time in Europe we've been able to see the camera? It is indeed the first public view. We launched it last week, just um, parallel to the uh, launch at, in LA. Um, but this is the first public view to see and touch Venice. And what uh, the filmmaker here, what did he show? Is he, he actually did a nice demo for the camera. So it looked like he shot something pretty extensive. Right. Uh, we had Ed Weil, BSC, shooting Euro the European demo reel, just like Claudio Miranda did this for the US. And uh, Ed was very impressed about Venice, especially the, uh, the 8 and D filters, because when he was in uh, a sports car, an old um, sports car, and here, uh, for him it was great to have um, uh, using lenses, using vintage lenses actually, uh, that gave him the uh, special the special flares um, in anamorphic and uh, without using any matte box before uh, in front of. So he had was uh, had to use less um, space in that car. And he, additionally, he was very impressed about the colors because he used F65 before and saw similar colors and was very impressed about that. Awesome! It's a really cool camera. I was shocked how small it it was. I expected to see something, you know, like an F65. Tiny camera compared to that. It is. Um, well, we had uh, many customers who liked the F65, but just said it was slightly too big. And on the other hand, the F55 was great in in, in size. And by the way, um, just the the winner of uh, the year before a Cannes Film Festival shot with F50, F55, and the lady said it was uh, great to have a small camera, very compact size. And um, now with Venice, we have a similar size, um, but um, with a, a full frame sensor. Fantastic, very cool camera. All right, and finally, VR. Let's talk to me a little bit about watching sports with VR goggles. What's going on? 
This is what we have done with the uh, Champions League uh, final, actually, just a couple of weeks ago. Where we had F55 with a 180 degrees lens, wide angle lens, and captured the, the live image um, on, on VR. Um, encoded that in real time and added um, additional content that, to that because you can as a VR viewer then decide if you want to see uh, social media, replays or watch the full pitch. That, that was very exciting. We streamed that live to viewers in Germany for Sky Germany. And we're going to see a little bit more of that type of thing. Watching sports in VR has to be a pretty incredible experience. Yeah. Um, we are talking to uh, content owners, obviously, who would like to uh, adopt um, the same technology. Um, but we at IBC this year are showing a, a couple of solutions uh, with VR, using, for example, the small RX0, um, small box camera, in a, in a very tiny uh, VR rig, just that size. Um, but we also have um, a slightly bigger size um, um, rig using UMC uh, S3CA, um, which is a little bigger, but using the same sensor as uh, in alpha cameras. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a You're wonderful welcome. show. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you.